Hello and welcome to another tutorial from More ECT. In this one, we're going to be creating a Simon Says style blocks game using Windows Form and C Sharp. So let me just show you what this game does. So at the moment you can see uh, we've generated a 4x4 picture box grid. But it's all in black at the moment. So on the screen you can see click three blocks in the same sequence. So when I click start, Basically, it will generate a random image. And then as you can see, it's flashing on three different blocks. So you chose this one, this one, and this one. Okay. So basically in the output in Visual Studio, right, we, I set it up. So it actually shows the diagnostics uh, in the output window. But at the moment, it picked number 15, five, and nine. So it picks three. Number 15, I click on that, it goes to black. And then number five, was the second sequence and then number nine so eight and then number nine is the uh, third sequence so it says well done you got them all correctly click ok and then i have to click start again and then it shows me different colors and it picks three different boxes okay i can pick them again okay and then once i click on it again it shows different colors and picks three different boxes but i have to select them in the right sequence. If I don't select them in the right sequence, then it will not work. So uh, one of the things you'll notice is that as I click on the picture boxes, the picture boxes numbers will also show up. And that's because we're tracking which ones the user is clicking on. Okay, so as you can see, it shows all the numbers that we have clicked on. And the last one here is the one that CPU has selected so far. So right now it's saying click on four blocks. So the game's rules are each time we score three, the blocks number will go up and it will keep going up to say seven blocks or six blocks so uh, obviously if it's like above six it's quite hard to memorize all of them by yourself and uh, so at the moment is picked pick 5 13 14 and pick number one so we can do that in the same sequence so in this case if i just pick four randomly it tells me your guesses did not match try again Okay, so I can't try the same one again. I click start again and it will pick four, four other ones. So pick three and then number four. Okay, so we're gonna create this game using Windows Form and C Sharp in Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and create a new project. Okay then, so in this, uh, in this window, I'm gonna click on create a new project. I will choose my Windows Form app template and I will name this project um simon says game more ICT. okay click next um .NET 6 is perfectly fine for us we're not using anything specific for the framework so we should be just fine to create okay so here's our empty form uh, so to, be, to get started let's resize the window first to 620 by um 550 so it's about this size and then we change the title to Simon Says Game More ICT. Okay, so that's the title of the game there. Right. Um, we can go to the toolbox, add a label for the title. The title can be Simon Says Game C Sharp. Then you can also change the font size. So if I just scroll up to the font size change it to bold to say 24 okay so you can just keep it right there and then grab another label here and uh, this one is going to be for the instructions so we're going to say click on three blocks in the same sequence okay uh, might be worth making it a little bit bigger as well 14 but so the blocks are going to be generated in the middle here so we can always change the locations around if we need to uh, one last thing we're going to need is a button so we'll just drag and drop a button here so we also need a timer Okay, drop the button there, make it slightly bigger, and then just say start. Okay, and we can also change the size of this one to slightly bigger. 18 bold. 
fine. Uh, toolbox again. And drag and drop a timer. So the timer gets added here. I'm going to change the timer's name to game timer. Enable to false is fine. Change the interval to 20. Go to the events and then type in game timer event. Okay, so the game timer event gets added to the script. Okay, and we also need an event for the click event for the button. So if you click on the button there, I'm still in my events window here. Let's find the click event. The button click event. And then that event will then get added here as well. Okay, and we also need, we're going to need a custom function here called actually, yeah, I would void the top blocks. Okay, and um, each block or the picture box that we're going to add is going to have a click event attached to them, but we're going to add it through the C sharp script. So we need to do a couple of global variables, well, a few global variables. Okay, so let's go to integer. We need a blocks x value is going to be equals to 160. Integer again, blocks y value is going to be equals to 80. So basically 160 from the left and 80 from the top. Okay, um, in score, set that to zero. In level, we set that to three. So that's the uh, that's how we actually increase the level. So you can increase the level to four, five, six, and it will choose that many blocks for you to guess. Okay. Um, after that, we're going to need a list of picture box. Uh, this list is called, will be called picture boxes. Okay. And we need another list of picture box. And this one is going to be called chosen boxes. So the ones that we chose to blink on, right? Right, so here we're creating the new picture boxes. So Visual Studio is giving me the suggestions and I'm just pressing tab to complete those auto suggestions, okay? So if yours doesn't do that, you can just type that in, not a problem. Okay, I'm gonna need a random, called rand equals to new random. Uh, color. And then you need a temporary color to save the color of those boxes or blocks. Integer called index to zero, called uh, tries to zero as well. And for time limit to zero. So, how much time are we going to spend on blinking those boxes? Okay, and we need a Boolean for selecting colors equals to false okay and then i um, need two strings so the way we're going to compare the cpu chose uh, cpu sequence and the player sequence is by saving the sequence steps inside of a string okay so i'm going to say call it string a string string to correct order And then another string to player order. Okay, now string to capital and lowercase doesn't really make a difference, but I don't know, I just prefer it with the lowercase. It looks more variable like instead of looking like a class. Okay, so these are the uh, variables that we need to make this game work. Now, if we start with the set of blocks, so we can place the blocks on the screen. Uh, we're going to start off with a for loop. It's going to be a for loop. So int is i is equals to 1. And then for the length, we're going to say 17 because we're going to display 16 blocks. Okay, so inside of that one, I'm going to say picture box. Call it new pick. Equals to a new picture box. All right. And then we'll say pick. I'll say new pick. Like so, dot name. So we want each of them to have a unique name. So it's going to be pick underscore. And then end of the line will say plus um, i. So it'll be from 1 to 16. So I don't want the numbers to start from 0. So this is why we're starting it from 1. And then it's going to go all the way to 16. 
Yep. And then we'll do new pick. Dot height is equals to 60. New pick. Dot width is going to be equals to 60 as well. Um, new pick. Dot back color. Um, we will set that to a black in the beginning. So um, that's how we know that picture boxes are in the default stage. And now for the location, we're going to say new pick dot left is equals to blocks x. And new pick dot top is going to be equals to blocks y. And then new pick dot click. So this is where we're going to add the click event to the picture boxes. Is it plus equals to click on picture box so this event hasn't been created yet so this is going to show a red line underneath underneath it okay we'll deal with that in a minute so for now we're going to say so basically the way it's going to work is we want to display four blocks in a row and then when it hits four we're going to increase the y position down and then when it hits eight we're going to hit the y position down again and when it hits 12 the y position is going to go down so that's why the last row is going to be placed right at the bottom and if the block is in anywhere between 4, 8 and 12, we just want to increase the X position so the blocks get positioned right next to each other instead. Okay, so to do that, we're going to say if I is equals equals 4 or I is equals equals 8 or I is equals equals 12. Okay, so if if I is then 4 is going to do something or 8 or 12 okay so i'm going to say blocks y is going to be plus equals to 65 so we're going to move it 65 pixels down and then blocks x is still going to be equals to 160 so that's basically um reverting back to the original position so if that's not true so if the i is anything other than those three numbers I'm going to say blocks x is plus equals to 65. Okay, so that's how we're going to get the grid view um, for the program. So the last thing inside the uh, for loop we're going to have to do is say this so controls to add. We need to add the picture boxes to the form. So the new pick gets added here. We also need to add it to the picture boxes list. So add the new pick. Okay, so that's all we need to do for the setup one. So uh, right now I'm just going to hover over the click on picture box line here. And then as soon as this says show potential fixes, click on that. And then we want to generate a method. Okay, so click on the last one there that says generate method. Okay, so generate uh, the method will get generated right at the bottom here. I just should delete that line from there. So I want it to do an exception or anything like that at the moment. Okay. So now I want to run this function when the form loads. So inside the form one constructor here, underneath the initialize component, the setup blocks. Okay. So if I run this function and then run the game, let's see what happens. Okay. So here we are. So our blocks are placed, and then obviously we have. I think I can move the label slightly higher. It doesn't look like it's getting squashed underneath and. Okay, um, 160 pixels is okay. Not to be honest, it's, yep. The grid is looking just okay at the moment. And let's move the label slightly higher. As soon as it unfreezes itself. And leave a little bit of padding there. Okay, yeah, that's still okay. All right. It's looking good. Okay, uh, one other thing that we need to do here is before the namespace, I want to go on the top here and say using system dot diagnostics. So we do need to output a line to the output. Sorry, we need to write a line into the output window. So it's a similar way how you do in Unity, say debug log, right? And then we can do the same thing in Visual Studio as well. So just just to see which boxes the 
CPU has picked in the chosen boxes. So I said chose boxes here. It should be chosen, chosen boxes. Okay, make it slightly bigger so it's easier to read. Chosen boxes there. Okay. All right, so now with the setup function done, okay, let's do the button click event here. So for the button click event, uh, first thing we need to do is basically we need to check for the score. So basically the way the, way the game is going to work is that if the score is equals to 3 and the level is still, say first of all, uh, below 7, then we should be able to increase the score, increase the level and then um, default the score back to 0. So each time the player guesses um, 3 in a row, we will increase the level to say from 3 to 4 to 5. So to do that, we'll do um, score is equals equals three, and level is less than seven. If that's true, then we say level plus plus, and then score is equals to zero. So, we, so that way, score can go to three again. Level goes up, score goes back to zero, and then until he hits level six. And so once he hits level six, it's not going to go anywhere above that. So if you want to move it above. Uh, you still can and you know try some of it out because I couldn't keep track of it after I think five so yeah six would be quite difficult um, just to guess without reading the output um, so let's go ahead and say uh, reset some of the stuff over here so we can say correct order string we can reset it back to string to empty yeah, string to empty it's going back to the capital one, but that's fine as well. Just reset it back to lowercase. Okay, and then say chosen boxes dot clear. So we need to clear out the list. Then after that, um, now we actually need to pick the three boxes. So however much level that we have, we're going to pick those boxes from the picture boxes list. So you'll be randomly selecting any three of them from there. Okay, so chosen boxes equals to uh, picture boxes, no picture box, picture boxes, no order by. Okay, so in here we can check X, but as then we'll just say rent oh, and dot next. Okay. And then take outside of it, and then we'll take the amount of variables that we want, and then we'll convert that to a list. Okay, so basically, we are going inside the list, generating a random, a gen generating a random number. Uh, with the level so basically if it's um, generating a r random number and then we'll run it the number of times it's inside the level here so the, if the level is three we generate three random numbers and we'll pick three items and we'll convert those three items into the list and save it inside the chosen boxes list here so right after that we need to now add those to the correct order string okay so we're going to say four and then int i is equal to zero is fine. And then we're going to say count uh, chosen boxes dot count. So however many boxes that we have inside the chosen boxes one. Then we'll just say correct order is plus equals two chosen boxes i dot name. Then we need to put a space next to it. Okay, like so. So that way it's spaced out. So it could be pick one, pick 13, pick and then if there's a space next to it so it's easier for us to read in the output now the way the game is going to work is we're going to compare these two to make sure the player and the correct a player has chosen the correct order of sequences from the the way the cpu has picked them inside the chosen box so with this done it should be able to save it so now we just need to color the existing boxes on the screen so when the button's pressed we want to pick you know random colors and assign it to all the picture boxes that's on the screen so for this one we'll run a different kind of loop so we're going to do a for each loop and we'll call this one picture box okay the type 
I'm going to give you a variable name of apps. And then we'll open into the picture boxes. No picture houses, picture boxes. And then we'll say x dot back color equals to um, color form ARGB. Okay, and we need to do one bracket here first. Then inside of there, we're going to say run dot next. And we're going to write through 256. So we run this one three times because for the red, green, blue, I think four times it goes in now, three times, yeah, three times it goes in. Okay, RGB, yeah, red, green, and blue. All right, after that, we also need to now write into our output window to see which ones were selected inside the chosen boxes list. Look at the debug dot write line, write line. And inside of here, I'm just going to display the correct order string. Okay, and then after that, we just say index of zero. Time limit. Time limit to zero. Selecting colors is equals to true, because at this point, it will be selecting colors. Um, right, and then we we'll start the game time as well. So in, inside the game timer is where we're going to start to do a start. Inside the games timer is where we're going to start doing the uh, blinking effect or the boxes, right? So I just want to run this at the moment and see if we get the desired effect from the game. Okay, so right now we have the blocks, click start, and then they all randomize. Okay, and then inside the debug, uh, inside the output window, you can see that it's right now it's pitch 16. 15 and 8. Click start again. Okay, so it's pick 13, 16, and 5. Again. Okay, um, then 10, 6, and 13. Okay, again, pick 1, 5, and 15. 6, 12, and 13. Okay, so it looks like it's working just fine. So if we set the level to say 4, Instead of three, you should be picking four items. Right. So as you can see now, it's picked nine, eight, 11, and 14. Pick 16, 1, 3, and 11. It picked 7, 11, 9, and 2. Great. Working just fine. Get it back to three. Okay, so that's for the button click event. Okay, so for the timer event, let's do a big if statement here first. So say if selecting colors, so if selecting colors boolean is true, uh, we want to time limit is going to be plus plus. So we're going to increment the time limit and then we're going to use the time limit to determine what to do with each boxes. So we'll run a switch statement here and then we'll put the time limit here. So time limit is going to go from zero upwards, right? So check it, say case 10. So if the time limit is 10, Bit wrong there. Come back here. Is ten. Okay, so the time limit is ten. So make sure after you do the case, right? So this is the value that's going to be in included inside of this variable here. So right now this variable is an integer, so we can put the number that we need. Okay, and after the case, we need to have a break after each case. We created a um, color variable called temp. Right. So the reason we created that one is so we can save the color of the boxes that it chose first and then reset it to white and then reset it back to its original color. Okay, so let's see how to do that. So let's say temp is equals to chosen boxes. Right, index. All right, so index is set to zero, so it's going to go with the first one first. Let's say back color. So we're going to um, collect the first one's back color first. And then we say close in boxes dot index dot back color is equal to color dot white. Okay. So we're saving the ex original color into the temp color variable. And then we're resetting the back color to white. So that's how the blink is happening right so but we need to reset it back to its original color and then reset it back to um uh, white again 
but because it blinks twice. Okay, so we'll say case 20, right? And then we say chosen color back color to now to temp. Okay, and then we need to do a break. To break, we're going to say case 30. Chosen boxes index dot black color is equals to color dot white break again then we do case 40 it's going to reset back to its original color okay and then we can do the break for the last one okay and now we need to basically once it's done the two blinks right then we can stop blinking it again now when it goes to 50 here we're gonna say um oops i don't want that on if so if index is less than chosen boxes dot count so if the index value is still less than the number of chosen boxes available then we're going to say index plus plus so we're going to increment the index again time limit is going to get set to zero right else adding else we're going to say selecting colors is equals to false so basically at this point if it's gone above the number of av available items then we don't need to do selecting colors anymore right then after that we can just do the break Okay, so this is a slightly longer one. So inside the if statement, we have a switch statement that's basically changing the colors of the picture boxes as it's doing. And when it comes to the last bit, at this point, it's basically checking if we still can do another loop around here. If we can, then we'll increment the index, reset the time limit, and then do all over again. And then as soon as it hits the exact count, it will just, um, set the selecting colors boolean to false so that way we can stop going through that again okay so basically all of this is running because selecting colors boolean is true okay so i think we should be able to run this and see if the blinking effects are working so if i start so see this one's blinking this one's blinking here yeah. then we got a three and then this one breaks index was out of range you know, negative. Oh, so yeah, I forgot something. Yep. This uh, very important. We need to do a minus one here. Okay, so basically we can. Uh, we need to make sure that it cannot go out of the range. So if there's only three items available, if it goes to four, it's gonna break. Because it's saying if it's less than, but it's obviously it's incrementing itself. So if, as long as we have a minus one, it should do just fine. Let's try it again. Selecting one, two, three, stop. Click again. One, two, three, stop. Okay, so outside of this if statement, uh, we need to figure out if the player has clicked on, they already clicked on three uh, picture boxes, then we can check the order of the sequence that they clicked on. If it matches with the correct order, then we can stop the game and show like, you know, well done, you got them correctly, increase the score. And if it doesn't, then we just show the other message to say that you haven't got it correctly. And then, you know, just reset the tries back to zero. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to say if tries is greater than or equals to level. So if we say if we're in the third level, we clicked on three of them after only after you click on three of them, then we can check for the correct order and the player order comparison. The if correct order is equals equals player order, right, then we can reset the tries back to zero. Um, game time, now we need to stop that before we show the message box. And uh, say message box dot show. Uh, inside of here, we say, well done. And um, you got them quickly. Okay, 
and then after that we're going to increase the score set and no score okay else so if that we clip on three of them but we didn't match it we're gonna still reset the tries back to zero stop the game timer and then show a different oh. and then show a different message in this case you say um no guesses did not match Okay. And then I think we can also add a header to this one to say mm -hmm. it says I'm just gonna copy that to the next bit. Okay, so that's for the tries. Okay, this will determine whether we can add a score or just let the player continuously play it All right um second bit is going to be for the label so this label here is called label 2 you just call it lbl info okay this looks better in the code info.text is going to be equals to and uh, say click on level plus how much you know whatever level that we're on blocks in the same sequence so if we're on level three it will say click on three blocks in the same sequence if you click on four blocks five blocks or six blocks in the same sequence okay i think that's it for the um game timer event so we've got one last thing to do which is the click event so click on the picture box okay so in this one we're going to do if statement here to say uh, if selecting colors is false right so we don't want to uh, be able to let the players click on the boxes as the boxes are being you know displayed and blinked on the screen so and we want to make sure the chosen boxes dot count is greater than one so there's still like you know some value inside of the chosen boxes list okay we can say picture box so we to identify the click on a picture box and we call it temp is equals to sender as picture box okay so if the sender is a picture box we can just say temp dot back color is equals to color dot black so we reset the back color of the item to black so we know that the player has clicked on it and then we add that clicked items name to the player order plus equals to temp dot name plus and then we need to do a space in the end of it so we need to make sure that these two strings between player order and the um chosen order need to be exactly the same right so the name and then there's a space in the end of it okay and then after that we're gonna basically say debug dot right line Okay, and then we're going to write the player order as well. And that way we can see it on the output. Tries plus plus. So we're going to add one to the tries. Because that's what we're checking. Right. Now if these two conditions are not true. Then we want to just return the click back. So we don't want to do anything else. So we don't want to register the click. To the picture boxes. Okay. So at the moment. We've got the temporary picture box. Resetting it back adding one okay we can try it out if i click start for example so right now if i click on it i won't get any registered value okay so now that it's selected is three click on one it goes to black but you can see which one i clicked on i clicked on the 16 click on one here one there and as soon as i press three it says my guesses did not match i need to try again so i can click start again this one this one and this one so if i click these three well done you guessed them correctly right. so as you can see as soon as i picked one then i picked the second one 
Then the third one, then he knows which ones are picked up. Okay, now um, I can click start, resets it back. This one, this one, and this one. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Got that. So now I've click on four blocks in the same sequence. Okay, so it's uh, number 12, 14, 6, and 9. Okay. So this time it was number 4, number 6, number 2, and number 11. Number 4, 6, 2, and then number 11. Okay. Let's see if we're gonna get to level five. Okay, the sequence is correct. Okay, there you go. We made it to level five now. So now the CPU is picking five picture boxes. Okay, so if I pick any in random order, it will just let me carry on playing in level five without having to revert back to anything else. Okay, so everything seems to be working perfectly fine. Uh, the source code is going to be available on the more ICD website, link in the, in the description as usual. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have, please leave a like and subscribe and comment on anything that you have issues with. And I will try to get to you as soon as I can. Um, other than that, I hope you have a good day and I will see you on the next one.